glasses. Make sure we're live. Oh, there we are. Nice. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is May 24th, 2020, and we're doing our 10th drop and math tutoring session for the year 2020. And uh, we're doing these on a basically almost every set of live streams that we announce we're uh, doing a math drop in session tutoring session maybe at least every second one anyway um, aside from that uh, welcome and this is an open discussion so basically uh, mathematics comes first if anybody has any math questions uh, lay it on us and we'll try to do our best to answer the questions hello spider-man how are you doing welcome welcome i hope you're having a nice chill sunday it's very chill here it's uh, the energy seems to be low energy and just relaxed and whatnot i think everyone's uh trying to get a handle on how things are going to play out for the next little little while uh which is a good thing which is a good thing slow people down mask of raven hello hello how are you doing i'm assuming notifications went out prez how's life chicho hope you're doing good brother doing well man doing well thank you very much um while we wait until people uh roll in i'm just gonna do our little intro i am up on patreon and uh if anybody wants to support this work patreon is a fantastic way to support this project and you can follow the work and just get notifications of what we're sharing what we're uploading and stuff like this and there's stuff going to be more than just the live streams taking place on there this morning i announced that uh, the article that i wrote about anomalies prisons and geophysics how governments use data and how to stop them is now up on soundcloud as well as BitChute. okay so patreon is a fantastic way to follow this work to support this work we are live streaming this on twitch uh chicho live uh twitch.com.tv backslash chicho live so if you want to participate in the discussion as it is happening twitch is where you want to be at i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on twitter gabs minds vk and elo as well as sharing other content as i mentioned we are uploading much of the audio to soundcloud i'm gonna catalog <laughs> uh, a lot of videos elder god how are you doing a uh, lot of videos uh, that we've recorded the sound with the lapel mic to load on to uh, soundcloud so i'm slowly going through that and that's going to take at least until the end of this year if not longer to get caught up so there's going to be a fair fair bit of content coming on soundcloud and i'll be announcing them either in batches or solo as they get loaded on uh, it's fun doing it really it's super fun doing it and we are uploading these videos to youtube and bitshoot and if you are on youtube you do have the youtube membership uh, abilities uh, by becoming a youtube member is also a fantastic way to support this project hello feline juice how are you doing i'm not sure how the math streams are going to go tell you the truth there is um I've been working with uh, you know, this evil elder god. It's becoming more and more evil. It's crazy. You figure they'd figure it out and sort of do a, do an about turn and say, okay, you know, we don't want to go that dark because people are jumping ship. But no, full speed ahead. <laughs> crazy. Lonely Peggy, how are you doing? Good to see you, Chicho. Uh, I like the shirt. Thanks. I got it as a gift for my aunt. It's a. Uh, what is it the design is actually oh you know what the design is actually like the I Ching it's like the dash dashes and dots so that's cool X how are you doing welcome to another live stream and I'm very chill today as you can I don't know if you can tell or not I might kick it up like I get excited so math kicks up but um math kicks up my excitement levels and stuff like this i am excited to do a live stream but i'm in like total chill mode uh, and by the way i've uh, ozarks as i've been watching ozarks i'm just gonna take these things down 
I don't know if you guys are watching any uh, programs or whatnot. I finished season two of uh, Ozarks last night. I did a marathon on like three, <laughs> three of them, three episodes. Darker colors are the only colors for me. Yeah, I like dark as well. I like light as well. Colorful stuff is beautiful, especially for spring and summer, right? My conspiracy channel has lost five uploads now. Oh, what? Really? Elder God, you got a YouTube YouTube channel? I didn't even know this. What? Send, the, send me the link, brother. I had no idea. Dude, what? Have I subscribed to it? I don't think so. Yeah, they're, they're zapping people, man. I, I really as as a as a company as a business it's it, they're committing Harry Carey like they're actually committing suicide on YouTube they're like if they keep this up within 10 years YouTube will be irrelevant uh, which is a huge uh, like what a disaster of a decision for a company that controls 95% of the video uh, platform to do. Like, how could you go from 95% possibly in 10 years to be being irrelevant? Unbelievable. Uh, not mine. I'm, I'm a silent witness. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, some of the videos I. I, I noticed the videos that I was following and I had bookmarked and stuff from my articles that I wrote back in 2000, you know, I started writing in 2006, 2000, 2005, 2006, 2007. A lot of the, I, I used to embed a lot of videos into my articles, videos and hyperlink stuff and write text. A lot of the videos are done. They're dead, right? What are your thoughts on Joe Rogan moving to Spotify? I think it's fantastic. I think people need to really decentralize from YouTube and Google. Okay. And if you're if you're only on Facebook, if majority of your interaction online is on Facebook, you're <laughs> you're clueless as to what's really going on in the world. Like uh, I heard you uh, Facebook has banned Brighton uh, video sharing platform and it prevents uh, from what I understand uh, I don't know if it even allows BitChute links to be posted. So, face I, I know there's still people on Facebook, but they're they they've been they've been caught by the political economic turmoil of the world, uh, with this pandemic and all this stuff going on. They they were blindsided because they were they were the information they were getting was completely censored. So they were like clueless as to what was going on. Uh, I don't know. It's weird, but I think I think it's a good thing. I think people, big big players on YouTube, them leaving YouTube, I, I think is a fantastic thing. Fantastic, Galio. How are you doing? Hey, bro. How are you doing? Well, thank you very much. Enjoying my Sunday. As you can tell, my my uh, my chill factor is de <laughs> decreasing, and my <laughs> my energy levels going up as soon as we start talking about censorship and whatnot. I would like you to. Send the save to my grandpa. <laughs> no, brother. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no props to people, brother. Joe Rogan got a huge paycheck. Yeah, hundred million, I think. If his stuff is to become completely exclusive, yeah. I think I think he got uh, from one or side. He got a hundred million, which is fine. Whatever you know. They can pay people whatever they want, right? I'm here, but I'm going to be making a sandwich for a few minutes. Nice. Enjoy your sandwich making, Graham. <laughs> I love sandwiches. Uh, are you shallow monk of mathematics? No, no. I would be the drunken master, maybe. <laughs> From the Shaw brothers. I don't. I don't want to do harm to people, but. Uh, I like sharing information and uh, yeah I like the drunken master by the way if you ever want to watch an amazing Shaw Brothers movie it's called come drink with me as far as I'm concerned it is one of their for me it's in my top five of Shaw Brothers movies come drink with me it is absolutely fantastic okay 
if you if you can handle the Shaw brothers uh, extremism and stuff like this which is mythology really right it's if you're a comic book fan you should appreciate Shaw brothers movies I have dump uh, whatsapp now telegraph is my uh, new message app Facebook is next to thy nice elder God I never use whatsapp I don't use TikTok. I I only have a Facebook account to keep in touch with two three people that I don't have access to talk to them I don't surf my feed that I, I don't I don't look at anyone's posts I just go on there message them log out and I don't stay on I, I don't stay on for replies I just message log out that's it and hope that's frequency of that I do that maybe check it maybe once every few days like two seconds right. seen it you've seen a drunk uh, drunken uh, come drink with me elder God fantastic what an amazing movie what an amazing movie the depth of that movie is unbelievable the the moral message and the and the societal message in that movie is amazing yeah drunken master of mathematics <laughs> slash friends his friends on a different uh, podcast said that's not the amount but made it seem like much uh, much more so 100 mil is a fair estimate okay coincidence is big math mathematicians also like oh uh, yeah and uh, the from my university days the math professors that I interacted with in the math department and I belong to the math club at UBC for a year when I went to University of British Columbia and we you know there was only like six of us seven of us in the math club it just formed I think maybe eight of us and they formed it um, when I was there so we were the first batch of people that belonged to the math club and stuff like this so we had a little space in the math math uh, building and saw a lot of the math prof they're they're crazy <laughs> half the half the math professors were uh alcoholics uh a quarter of them were schizophrenic or something i don't know if schizophrenic is the right word but they're like you talk to them and their mind is, <laughs> is somewhere else like it's crazy what a trippy place to be what a trippy place to be and they 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 have one foot in in if they're lucky they have one foot based in the present and another foot based in multiple dimensions uh in places which is a brilliant interaction as well once once you start talking with them and stuff like this you realize the depth of connections that they're making and the you know if you could plug into their mind and see the visuals that they must be uh trying to create to be able to process the information that they're uh, they're thinking about uh, would be amazing right would be amazing very chill place to be actually if you ever want to spend um, downtime at a university just go to the math department right take some math courses and just enjoy yes and most most of mathematician mathematics people sacrifice hair for math <laughs> to slash you belong to a math department and clothes and uh, like raggedy clothes they come in and uh, and then there's the other side too there were some people in the math department uh the prof that were uh, sort of celebrities and chess masters and stuff like this which is cool it's, it's a very unique dynamic to be in 13 pints last night ah oh, i feel great please don't attempt this <laughs> no that's not good well if you feel great that's fantastic 13 pints brother <laughs> i hope you reduce a little bit as as you get older but every now and then it's actually good to flush the system right it's actually okay to flush the system as i said i have no idea thanks uh, thanks to god i'm not in math but i have seen many people yeah slash yeah and it the, the crazy thing about uh, the math department is uh, there it, it's sort of a becomes a sort of a bubble i think a lot of departments do but math department is so uh, 
it's it the same with the math department my interaction with the math department and people who are really into mathematics and stuff like this is the same type of interaction same type of mindset I, i've seen through the entheogen community right because they they're they're not just thinking about material possessions material gains celebrity or whatever it is they're esoteric they're they're holistic they're thinking about larger larger things about our universe um, good space to be in right I would love there to be a university where it's it's a mathematics entheogen uh, faculty and see what we we find out from uh, from that community I really like uh, what I was gonna say regarding uh, school and mathematics and stuff like this half of my students uh, that, I won't get presented but there there are students right now that are working hard trying to stay up to their classwork and trying to make sure they learn the material I'll give you percentages that percent is very few okay there's a certain percentage that are willing to learn as long as they get a little push little push little direction right little interaction where it's fun and stuff like this that percent is a little bit higher okay but the majority of kids in school right now are having a hard time trying to grasp how they're supposed to learn on their own or self-direction because they haven't been taught through our centralized education system that is it is up to them to educate themselves so they're they're trying to do an adjustment was very difficult for them and they don't have the resources available to them and they don't want to interact online they you know this is unfortunately there's a lot of educators a lot of people that don't know how to interact online how to teach online and the, you know nothing against them it would be for me as well it would be virtually impossible to teach a classroom of 20 people uh, mathematics online i wouldn't take it beyond five people personally if i was going to do interaction online so it's crazy and the tools available to them the educators is minimal it's garbage the bureaucracy involved in the tools is insane <laughs> oh my god what's the point of living if you don't feel alive yes math as a subject is amazing like it never fails to blow my mind yeah yeah it for me I, i'm not in depth in it anymore because i'm not i'm i'm not in the university world anymore so the mathematics i'm using is very rudimentary because it's mainly just high school stuff right uh, at some point hopefully i'll get into more higher level level probability statistics and whatnot but uh, when i was immersed in it the the problems of the world and the superficial uh, fears and anxiety that people had about the world just seemed so irrelevant because you were sitting there trying to solve uh, a problem that could only be solved through the realm of mathematics where you're taking in multiple variables and doing integrations and looking at different systems trying to figure out what's going to happen right it it's mind expanding I tell people that it, it it makes mathematics makes you smarter period i mean the, almost anything you learn makes you smarter but mathematics takes it to another level it really does graham this might be uh, a controversial opinion in here but i don't find math any more enlightening than other subjects i love every subject and all subjects have opportunities for amazing things i agree with you graham however math is different okay physics is the only one that comes uh, actually engineering would, would as well uh, structural engineering just building things and stuff like this what you're involved with Graham but mathematics is a world on its own because it's not concerned about what you can touch what you can see what you can feel it is concerned about um, 
just specifically systems some of them might be imaginary systems and how they interact is basically really pure problem solving pattern recognition and the pattern doesn't have to be real it just has to have the possibility of existing right so i find mathematics the closest thing to science fiction okay that's why i think a lot of science fiction uh people that i've met in my life uh, have been avid math people and math people have been avid science fiction people uh, mathematics is different because mathematics is it's its own language like if you're studying history you're not studying a language you're studying history you're studying events right biology is looking at just specifically one system and trying to figure out how these things work out it doesn't even though it's got its own words that you use you know there's languages that you have to learn same with law or anything like this right but the structure of it is not from the base up mathematics is structure from the base up it's built up the language right so it has its own nuances that i don't think anything else has what did you work on at the at the university i did geophysics so my stuff was very hands-on even even though i got a math minor uh, for my stuff it was a lot of uh, just taking data and just crunching data processing data and, uh, and that type of uh, work and then i did that for you know almost a decade doing geophysics great greatest mathematicians that people don't really know about uh, greatest as far as i'm concerned the most intelligent human being uh, that well you know we could say galileo and all these people but uh, tesla for me would be the one person he's more uh, known now if you get it if you're old and if you're getting older and you've looked into the science and the conspiracy into into the probabilities of uh, what could be you'll know about tesla but a lot of high school kids don't know about tesla right so i would say tesla is the greatest scientist that people don't really know about there's a certain age group that does uh, i would say anywhere between 20 to 40 45 they're aware of tesla but below that and above that they're not really aware of tesla not too much i want to ask that if someone is best at math like he's uh regular uh, then does he get right to call other people dumb no no because it makes you smarter relative to yourself when you learn math right so if you're at this level of intelligence whatever that level might be whatever the metric is you're measuring you learn math you're going to kick up right you're going to kick up a fair bit okay you learn anything you're going to kick up but math is leaps and bounds right but just because someone doesn't know mathematics you can't call them dumb because they might know a lot more a lot of other things that you as a mathematician will not know about right as a friend of mine used to always say uh, two heads are better than one right there's always something someone else will know better than you or someone will else will know something that you don't know right da, 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 da. No, they should use their gift to help the others around them. Yeah, I agree. Right? Is mathematics an art or a science? I think it's both. Um, I think it's both. So science, mathematics is a language of science, but mathematics is also the language of art. You can think about it that way as well. Masquerading due to pure mathematics being abstractions it can apply to a wide variety of things easily now yeah. i agree with masquerade it's just mathematics you can apply anywhere like really we apply to cooking like food tesla yes i love his ideas he reminds me a lot of da vinci in some ways yeah the, the, like the closest comparison would be da vinci right for tesla um Galileo da Vinci and as far as I see it Tesla would have been above Newton my personal opinion 
Okay. If extraordinary mathematicians don't call others dumb, then why the hell little math teachers in school call us dumb? <laughs> because because they're not really uh, they don't most of the, the there's a lot of people teaching mathematics in school that aren't like for me I don't consider myself a mathematician not by a long shot not, not even close like I've told people from the get-go and I tell my students I'm not a mathematician I'm just someone that knows the language of mathematics to the ability that I need to to be to be able to apply it in my life right there is other mathematics higher level mathematics that I would love to learn to be able to apply in my life but I have to take the time to learn and I don't have that time right now at some point I will make the time right and I've mentioned this from the beginning as well right but you have to appreciate that there's a lot of people teaching mathematics in school that have no math background I know some of them right I've interacted with some of them they've taken someone that has studied geology or some kind of science right that's their background and they they don't have a math teacher so they assign this person to be the math teacher for grade 8 and 9 or grade 10 or 11 in their appropriate school right they're just because someone's teaching mathematics it doesn't make them uh, knowledgeable in the language of mathematics and as mask of raven says because they're bad teachers presumably right graham thank you for taking care of business wrangler is the highest certification in the world for mathematicians is it wrangler wrangler i don't i don't know that Technically, that was a math question. <laughs> the art or science? Grand Chicho, I might have to disagree. If you were a historian, you might also say that history has its own language. Um, history has its own patterns, but I don't agree that history has its own language, Grant. I think history has its own patterns. You know if you don't our if you don't know our history we're doomed to repeat it blah 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 right uh, but I don't consider history to be a language uh, I consider law to have its own language as well right the words have different meanings based on you know for example if, if we say we understand in regular speak then that means oh I, I get what you're saying if you say you understand in Canada anyway and I think it's the same in the United States it means you agree with the person right so when the judge in a courtroom says do you understand the last thing you want to do if you're being prosecuted is say yes I understand it means that you agree with them uh, there your <laughs> your future is sealed and you're gonna to go to jail right so they do have their own languages that they use but I don't think they are a language anyone want to help me solve this problem given cos 2x equals da -da 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 -da, find sine x tan x and so on sure let's do it Miro let's do mathematics let's try this out good morning from Cali good morning Lark how are you doing you got to be there emotes sorted save Chicho you seem to be good at strategies would you consider playing a video game called civilization 6 civilization is up to 6 now eh? wow 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 uh, I at some point I'm gonna get back into gaming but right now I'm just I have lots of my plate man that I'm enjoying so on all the writing uh, Graham Chicho what is your definition of language is a language not just a pattern of speaking and conveying no uh, because that way the English language wouldn't just be English language there's multiple dialects right I don't consider a language just whatever form we use to communicate language to me is you have to have the the axioms the syntax built up and everything goes on top of that right language is not just a way of uh, communicating it well I'm not saying that properly but I I don't think so hello Chicho and Chad good evening Brett how are you doing I have this. I have dyslexia how can I teach myself to do well with numbers uh, too embarrassing being 26 and unable to count uh, we're gonna come to the trick question by the way uh, Miro uh, let me just answer this uh, 
first of all you shouldn't be embarrassed okay if you have dyslexia or you can't you have a hard time counting and stuff like this but you need to practice right I know it's hard really I've I work with students and I have worked with students that are on a spectrum either uh, autistic spectrum or have dyslexia and stuff like this um, it takes hard work really uh, and you have to be at peace with yourself appreciate that it's gonna take a long time for you to be able to break through some of those boundaries barriers right uh, this calculia this this calculia oh let me read the definition of this calculia is difficulty in learning and comprehending arithmetic such as such as difficulty in understanding numbers learning how to manipulate numbers performing mathematical calculations and learning facts and mathematics yeah so i this calculia this calculia i usually associate that with uh, i've had students that way that i don't know if i'm putting them in the right calorie but i just say usually spectrum right but either autistic or um have dyslexia or stuff like this but i've had students that have a really hard time especially doing the counting so first thing i do with them is make sure they're counting properly right and i don't uh, hold them back because they can't count in a certain way right so for example a lot of a lot of students that i've had have a hard time counting in the teens right that have i'm not sure if they were diagnosed with this because i don't dig in uh to what the what the uh what do you call it diagnosis has been right i just uh interact with them in a way where we can break through barriers and i've had students where they have a hard time counting especially going past the teens right because the teens in english are difficult uh if you're because they don't follow the pattern initially and the you know 15 16 17 and stuff like this but once you practice a little bit you can let mistakes go by right and then you get into the 20s and you explain how the 20s work 21 22 and you get into the 30s 40s and then you get into the 100s and once you get into the 20s the rest of it should be easy because it's putting it together right but once you go a certain way right then let's say you have someone's having a hard time into the teens right get into correct a couple of them but don't stay there too long go into the 20s 30s 40s get into the 100 and then start correcting some of the mistakes previously so you have to loop it when it comes to that's the way i do it anyway when i'm working with someone that's having a hard time just with numeracy really with numbers okay after that is addition and addition usually people deal with it okay right I tell people use your fingers there's nothing wrong with using your fingers right if you have tools that you can use to be able to help you learn mathematics it is 100% okay to use your fingers some people are embarrassed they don't want to use their fingers they clench their fist like this I go what are you doing use your fingers why aren't you using your fingers right and then you get them comfortable with their discomfort of learning mathematics right as soon as you get into addition multiplication should be the next step not subtraction because multiplication is an extension of addition okay so for me i go into multiplication and multiplication is a big hurdle for people uh to surpass okay hello kyle how are you doing let's make some numbers dance let's make some numbers uh please this cal Kulia is now a recognized learning difficulty I can count but I can't add subtract or multiply or divide I wasn't taught well in school because no one understood I cannot count backwards um, backwards I I get into counting backwards when you get into subtraction so I wouldn't worry about counting backwards okay uh, which please okay I wouldn't worry about counting backwards I would go from uh, counting to adding so but I cannot add so are you using just because there's a difficulty here gang let me let me deal with this let's uh, uh, Miro are you okay holding off on the on the trig until we deal with this if you're in a rush we can deal with the trig and uh, uh, which please 
are you okay waiting if we deal with trick so one of you guys answers uh, will deal with one or the other uh, let me know okay because if, if we're gonna get into this I'd like to get people past their hurdle and both of these seem to be a hurdle so let me know which one you guys will want to deal with first okay I'm quite hungover for today's lesson no worries Gabu. <laughs> Trust me, there's a lot of math prof that are hung over when they're teaching mathematics. Okay. I have ginger and mint tea. So let me know, gang, which one you want to deal with first. It's nice I got... I'm very embarrassed. No, don't be embarrassed. Uh, almonds and chocolate. And a little bit of walnuts. Okay, don't be embarrassed. Let's deal with you first. Miro, uh, I'm assuming you're okay with us waiting until we do the, the trick. And I'm going to write down the trick problem here. That way we can deal with it. Cos 2x. Cos 2x is equal to do, 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 3 over 5. 3 over 5. And we want to find sine and tan, right? Sine x and tan x. Uh, sine x, tan x. Okay. I have trouble with multiplication in single digits. I can usually figure out the answer eventually, but it takes me way too long. Okay, Parker, my question to you is, what's multiplication? Multiplication is just multiple additions together. So always think of it that way. Don't be embarrassed. I'm totally okay. It's totally okay. We're all here to help and learn and we accept uh, everyone. Yeah, and here. Uh, which which please let's deal with this right now right so you're okay with counting it's been two minutes and I love it awesome Panda. <laughs> welcome to our stream and by the way thank you for the subs thank you for the follows gang if I don't catch it my apologies my focus is on the mathematics okay but I very much do appreciate the support and uh, the follows and the subscribes and all that jazz and the conversations of course right so I'm just gonna call you which please or I'm just gonna call you please okay let's assume you're okay with uh, with uh, with counting right once you're okay with counting let's deal with addition okay because that's the key you need to learn addition first right so if you're okay with counting put yourself on a number line okay so draw a line okay start at zero and you know how to count right so you're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen right and what you're gonna do is say okay we're gonna do simple addition right now we're gonna add single digits together right so let's assume we want to add let's put it here two plus five so all you do when you're trying to add two plus five you go to two one two right this is two you put yourself here and you add five which means you take five steps right so if you're here you go one two three four five and you're here right so you ask yourself where are you because you just went five steps right and where you are now is one two three four five six seven right by the way you can teach subtraction using the same method as well right so for me i'm not gonna run you through you know spend the time to do multiples of these right i'm just teaching you the process you need to do for yourself or with an educator where you have to learn or a method you can use to learn how to add right so what you can do now is say okay let's add multiple things together plus three plus another five so if you're gonna go plus three plus another five so from here you go three one two three okay so you were at seven then you're at eight nine ten right so this is another three being added you're here now after you add that guy and then what you're gonna do you're gonna add another five one two three four five right so now you're at 15 so this is another five being added and now that you're here okay this seems simple okay 
but it's crucial to get a visual of what's really taking place. So you have to become comfortable with this. Now, if you're adding large numbers, right? Happy Sunday, Chicho. Hope you're having an awesome weekend. Thanks, Grand Prix. Having a good time. Hello, Chicho. I was, I was, I was gone. Don't know if you noticed, but I am back. Have you already solved the trick problem? No, Miro. What we did was say we're going we're gonna to deal with this right now uh, about adding, sub multiplying, subtracting, and dividing, and then we'll deal with your problem. I hope that's okay. Okay. So just imagine you do this for a little bit of time. Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Awesome. I hope you're okay with that, Miro. Now do this a little bit. Get a hang. Get a f hang of it. Get a feel for it. Right. And then go, okay, let's add bigger numbers. Cool? Okay. Let's add bigger numbers. Your source marshal. I always am trying to memorize addition and subtraction of different numbers so I know the answer immediately, but then I can't figure it out if I don't have it memorized. Here's the kicker part of Parker, right? It's not about memorization because if you do a lot, you automatically remember. The trick is to learn the process of it. Okay. So learn the process. And then once you start doing something, your mind is magic. It can remember things, right? So don't try to put it into memory without understanding what's going on. Understand what's going on and your mind automatically puts it into memory. Okay. A general confusion is really cool. I, ha I have, but I'm not sure why you provided domain this is very informative thank you so much my pleasure i'm feeling a little re relief uh, we're going to continue with this by the way okay thing barbara hey, chicho currently using a lot of logic to figure out some complex uh, command blocks in minecraft nice that game is very useful for exercising small math and intense logic yeah it is indeed i have, I have students that are uh that play minecraft and uh, once you link it up with mathematics, they're like, wait a second, that's all mathematics. Mm -hmm. Now, just imagine if we had bigger numbers to add, right? So instead of two, five, three, and five, let's assume we're adding 20, right? And I'm making the link very obvious, of course, right? But I'm gonna show you how this works, right? 20, 50, plus 30 plus 50 right we just kicked it up one order of magnitude right so what you do is put your number line together again right put your tick marks in there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen whatever it is right now what you're gonna do is because these are bigger numbers you're not gonna count these as one you're going to say, okay, you know what? Because I'm gone to another scale level, instead of making each one of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I'm going to make each one of these tens. Each jump is now a 10, right? So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, right? Then you do the same thing. Start off at 20, right? You're here, here's you, and you're gonna add 50. So each jump is a 10. So you're gonna go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. You just added 50 to this person. He took 50 steps. Now you're at 70, okay? Then you're gonna add 30, one, two, three. Now you're at 100. Then you're gonna add 50, 10, 20, 30 40 50 now you're at 150 okay so you're doing jumps of 10 now you're okay with this please minecraft is an incredible educational tool uh, i posted that is why it's popular experiential learning da, 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 da. love that lodge is a great part of math and it is use it da, da, da. i feel like an idiot being an adult and not knowing the answer to something simple like nine times six without 
uh, taking like five here Parker anything times nine I'll show you this trick right away anything times nine hold out your hands right hold out your hands so you're gonna go nine times five nine times six what were we doing nine times six you're gonna go one two three four five six what's what's nine times six fifty four what's nine times three one two three hold this back what's nine times three twenty seven right so the nine multiplication trick with hands is easy the other ones you have to sort of memorize but the more you do the more you'll know we have a playlist okay we have a playlist uh, early childhood education I, let me find it for you okay because I've gone through and I've put together some videos of how to add, how to teach adding and multiplying and I'm gonna add uh, subtraction and division to this uh, hopefully this summer okay here's the playlist game if you want to learn how to add subtract multiply and divide boop. okay check that out but I'm gonna continue with this right now I love the multiple of nice trick I still use it uh, when I'm dr uh, draw blank yeah and there's another trick as well by the way that you can multiply six seven eight nine ten together right so those are the multiplications that people have a hard time with okay hello Felix how are you doing okay so the nine multiplication is just this you count you do you know seven times nine one two three four five six seven what's seven times nine six sixty three <laughs> right now what if you had eight times nine <laughs> usually I'm lost listening but your voice is awesome this is the old school tricks old school tricks right here's another multiplication where you can multiply six and nine six all the way up to ten so consider start with the pinkies and each one is a six six seven eight nine ten right let's say you want to do six times eight right you get the six from here you get the eight from this one you go six seven eight touch them together okay this is a little bit more confusing so I'm gonna do this right I have a video out there showing how to do this too right so six times eight right all the fingers including the touching ones that you went through already they're tens so 10 20 30 40 right so these four fingers are 40 and then you multiply the two and the four you got two and four together two times four is eight so six times eight is 48 okay sorry what did I well six times eight oh, my bad six times eight is 48 four times four times two is eight and these four are 40 okay I do have a video out there that shows this as well uh, on my YouTube channel it's not on BitChute yet okay I did Kumon back in the day but was terrible about it and would rip out pages and copy out the answer book it it did give me the basics really well though I'm thankful for it on on that uh, front here's the kicker uh, Gabu I've had a lot of students that have gone through Kumon that I work with the problem with Kumon is this exactly what you just said they give you pages upon pages of just multiplying multiplying dividing multiplying just do 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 like a machine right you learn multiplication well right you learn certain basic concepts well but it takes the love out of mathematics right it leaves a hollow shell of human beings that consider mathematics to be memorization and they hate it okay i do not recommend kumon i've had to deal with students that have come out of kumon where they're getting into higher level mathematics and they're having a hard time with it right because they don't understand the concepts because they're just used to memorizing they're not used to understanding right so kumon is great if you just want to learn multiplication right because you're doing if you do something for that long that many pages that many problems you'll learn it no matter what right 
but I don't recommend it. It takes the love out, love out of mathematics. You just blew my mind with that trick. I'm not being fictitious. <laughs> uh, uh, Rasta, also, multiples of nine always have digits that add up to nine. Yeah, that's true too. A student of mine pointed that out to me actually, with the first number being one less than the multiple. So nine times eight is 72. Seven is one less than eight and seven plus two is nine nice nice it's so fun in base time so throwing up with math gangs <laughs> it's nice i love that hey chicho knowing that you are into math but also are also open to conspiracies what is your opinion on the ancient human feats of knowledge strength such as building the pyramids uh he, mathematics has been part of the human humanity forever some of the mathematics that we have known in the past has been incredibly strong right and we don't really know about human past civilizations that came before us right so there's major gaps in human history right for some reason people you know believe that what we know now is the absolute truth which is not the case right what we knew 100 years ago people say oh hum human beings only been around for you know 20,000 years 30 now we go oh no no human beings have been around for hundreds of thousands of years right the mathematics of ancients was powerful they built astronaut astrological grand structures that lined up with the eclipses and stuff like this it's crazy oh my god that was such an unexpected answer that's exactly how i felt kumon was like a mental prison mental prison indeed as for the feat of strength mass enslavement unfortunately now we're here right now right right please so with the bigger numbers all you have to do is just increase the increment your tick marks instead of going up by ones go up by tens then you ask yourself okay what happens if the numbers aren't exactly like this create another number line let's do we'll do we're gonna do a simpler one okay let's let's assume we're going 22 plus 53 right well create a number line okay now we're into the tens again and you should be able to see that this doesn't go above 100 right 20 plus 50 22 plus 53 and i'm going to give you a visual and then we're going to do it algebraically algebraically is easier okay but i want you to see the visual as well so if you see this then what you do is you put your tech mark, tick marks here and i'm going to make the tick marks a little bit longer right so 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 right put yourself at 22 so here's 10 here's 20 and 22 would be here somewhere right so put a 22 there here let me make this bigger so you see it so we're going to put 22 here right so that was 20 i'm going to put 22 here this is 22. now you're going to add 53 to this so what you do is you do jumps of tens right now so you're going to go 10 20 30 40 50 if you were just adding 50 to this you would be at that's 22 32 42 52 62 72 and then you just have to add the 3 to it so you're going to go 1 2 3 75 that's where you're at okay when you're adding this this is just a visual you're not going to do it this way okay this is the way you're going to add numbers together and it's the old school method forget about anything new that they're teaching you right with the old school method oh i shouldn't erase that that was a visual but oh well we have 22 plus 53 and the beauty of mathematics is you do things in piecemeal right mathematics is able to break things down into smaller segments where you can work from the smaller segments and build it up again right you take it apart you build it up take it apart build it up right so what you do is you add the digits the 
the columns appropriately and we're going by uh, by tens right so you have to understand the counting process right so if you understand the counting process let's do this these are the single digits the tens the hundreds put a little comma there these are the thousands ten thousands hundred thousands put a little comma there and these are the millions right each one of these is if is goes from zero to nine right so there's ten numbers there zero one two three four five six seven eight nine right once you go to the ten you move on to the next number right so over here if you have 22 plus 53 you add these guys up 2 plus 3 is 5 2 plus um, 5 is 7 so it becomes 75 right now let's assume we had a larger number let's assume we had 2 2 8 7 4 plus 5 3 9 5 7 9 5 uh, let's make this a 2 for now right so you're adding these two numbers together start from this side you add these guys 4 plus 2 is 6 and then you add these guys 7 plus 5 is 12 and if you're having a hard time with this put your put your number line together they nothing stopping you from creating visuals for yourself initially right don't step away from the visuals create the visual for yourself if you need it right so let's put a visual here because each one of these you're adding tens right that's what you're concerned about just make a number from your uh, what do you call it your number line uh, up to like 15 or 20 or something take it up to 20 so you're gonna go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 20 all right the reason you're gonna take it up to 20 is because if you're only adding two rows the most you could have is a 9 and a 9 that takes you up to 18 right so if you're gonna add this 7 plus 5 so you're gonna go this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 plus 5 1 2 3 4 5 right so you're at 7 you went 8 9 10 11 12 so this is 12 right so 7 plus 5 is 12 now 7 plus 5 is 12 well you can't just put 12 here what you do you put the 1 if this is 12 you put this guy here and you take the one and you put it up top here so this is your 12 12 okay and then you add these guys 1 plus 8 is 9 9 plus 9 is 18 now again you can do it on a number line right go to your 9 7 8 9 this is your 9 and then you add another 9 10 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay so if this is 20 you know you're two back from 20 so this is 18 now I'm going speedy Gonzalez right now by the way okay but I'm just showing you how you can teach yourself with this right so that becomes 18 and again you put the 8 here and you put the 1 here so this is 18 and you do again 1 plus 2 is 3 3 plus 3 is 6 2 plus 7 is uh, 2 plus 5 is 7 okay it, I hope that helps uh, please you have to go slow if you're having a hard time with it just go slow man no, there's an, if you're learning mathematics if you're learning anything appreciate this the school system is not the best way to learn it because once you're getting into this if you're really into it when you're learning something there shouldn't be a bell ringing saying okay stop thinking about this let's go learn history right if you're learning about this spend two hours on this three hours on this when you spend a longer amount of time on something you'll pick it up faster okay you might get frustrated but you spent time with it okay I hope that helped I hope that helped counter is brilliant the speaker was all counter is brilliant uh, okay, let me see what I missed in the conversations. Uh, trick problem. The trick problem was here. We're going to deal with this right now. 
Okay. My God, that was such an unexpected. Da, 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 da. As we fear, da, da. What was the trick problem? Another weird trick for nine is that if you take any number multiplied by nine and add up the digits, yeah, ba, ba. repeating the second step as many times as necessary, you will always end up with nine. Add up the digits of the products, repeating the second step as many times as you want as necessary you will always end up with nine. Ah, okay cool ah that's cool Felix I didn't know that do you think that there's some mathematical concept that are uh, now lost for sure Miro I think so too the chances I feel are high I mean I wonder what kind of science math knowledge was inside the library of Alexandria which was destroyed one of the worst mistakes in human history in my opinion yeah was it a mistake Miro I don't know during the Crusades much of the mathematics we had was destroyed yeah da, 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 da. 10 is therefore a half you know. okay you you did it you gave him the answer we're gonna do it right now thanks mask of raven by the way there's a book called the uh, abyss uh, abacus uh, and the cross that I've read ab about sort of the pre-crusaders crusades math and scientists monks of France and the destruction of anything having to do with uh, Arabia during the Crusades yeah thanks mask that was for you uh, got a grant bah, bah, bah. wow what's the conversation okay I'm gonna do the I'm gonna work on the trick gang the trick problem is just simple algebra yeah da, da, da many chapters of Euclid's elements yeah okay so let's do this trick problem so let me take a sip I gotta take a sip of water not water um, ginger and mint tea So there's a few different ways you can approach this, okay? You want the sine of x and tan of x. So let's approach it, um, here, let's approach it this way first, okay? First of all, draw a triangle if you want, right? So we can draw a triangle. We can go like this, just to get a visual for it. Now, I'm not sure if we're gonna complete it this way, but at least it's gonna give us a visual because you can get different types of problems with this, right? So, Sokotoa, sine, cosine, and tangent work with right angle triangles, right? So, we're gonna put the angle, this is the angle, right? 2x, you can call it theta if you want. So you could say let theta equal 2x, right? So we could do that here. Because people are more comfortable with theta or a or b or whatever it is right so we can say cos uh, theta x cos theta cos theta is equal to 3 over 5 right agree okay so cosine cos of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse so adjacent is this and hypotenuse is this so adjacent that's your ratio right adjacent over hypotenuse so it's three and five okay you're okay with that I hope so yep yep now we're gonna use a calculator for this by the way we need to okay yeah I'm okay okay cool so you can figure out what this is by using Pythagorean theorem, this side, because Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So you're going to get three squared plus b squared, which is this guy, is equal to c squared, which is five squared. And c is the hypotenuse, right? So you're going to get b squared is equal to 25 minus 9, minus 9. So b squared is equal to 16 square root both sides. So b is equal to plus or minus 4. The square root of anything is plus and minus, by the way, right? But for now, because we're drawing a triangle, it can't be negative length, so we're going to make it a 4. So this guy is a 4, 
This length is a four. Okay. And this actually be uh, round brackets because it's an open subset. That's from something further on, right? Let's get rid of In fact, I don't think my answer was right. Uh oh. Did it look quick? We'll check it out. So if we're doing this, then we can figure out what sine of theta, sine of theta and tan of theta are easily, right? Because sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And for this situation, it would be sine of theta is equal to four over five and tan of theta is opposite over adjacent and in this situation tan of theta here we don't need this part of it because that's just becomes cluttery so tan of theta is going to be four over three right now we weren't looking for sine of theta and tan of theta or sine of 2x and tan of 2x we were looking for sine of x and tan of x right but this is sort of a visual of what's taking place the link between tan and cosine so whenever they give you a trig ratio you can draw it and these guys are just the sides the length of the size that they've given you does that make sense is that okay i hope so now if that's the case, then what we've solved here for, I'm going to erase this guy. Let's erase the Pythagorean theorem. So what we've solved for, yes. So what we've solved for here really is sine of 2x is equal to 4 over 5. And tan of 2x is equal to 4 over 3. Agree? Right? Identities. Yeah, you could use the double cosine identities. Oh yeah, by the way, I should ask you this. Miro, is this uh, question, are you guys doing the stuff using the identities? The sine and cos double angle identities and stuff? Or are you guys just using straight up algebra? If you're using the identities, uh, we'll use the identities for this. Burning cannabis and learning mathematics. It's a wonderful Sunday. It's a wonderful Sunday, Grand Prix. <laughs> right? So which one is it, Miro? If you're using identities, we'll go identities. I'm not going to go down this, this rabbit hole. Mm, I think I think you're using identities. Let's use identities. Okay, so this is just a relationship between the cos and cos, sine, and tan, if you want to think about it that way, right? Now, from here, I'm just going to do this quick, right? If you were going to solve for x, because that's what, you, that's what you need, right? You need x, and then you can just do the reverse way, but you can do the identities. If you were just solving for x, you would just go 2x is equal to sine inverse of 4 over 5, and 2x is equal to tan inverse of 4 over 3, okay? And then whatever answer you get, you just divide by 2, divide by 2, right? And then you would have your x is equal to tan inverse of 4 over 3 over 2. Okay, and sine inverse of that equals up to But I also like this method. Uh, we'll use the identities. The identities make it a look a little different. Okay. So I'm going to erase this down. This is, by the way, this is a good method to get a visual of the thing, of what's going on. Because pre-2x, what they would give you is generally uh, just cos of x is equal to this and find sine and tan okay so if you're using identities check this out we do actually we still do sort of to a certain degree need the triangle but we'll leave that alone for now so cos double angle is this cos 2x is equal to i gotta get my identities sine 2 sine x cos x hold on let me do this Trig identities, trig identities, trig, and then 
identities. As you can tell, I don't memorize the trig identities. Okay. We need the double angle identity. Where is our double angle identity? Mm. No, there it is. So we got two double angle, three double angle identities for cos theta, right? Cos squared a sine minus sine squared a. So cos squared uh, x. This would be x. Cos squared x minus sine squared x. It's also equal to two cos squared x minus one, and it's also equal to one minus two sine squared x. One minus two sine uh, squared x. Okay. So if you're using your identities, this is what you would do. Check this out. Boop. Okay. Um, here. Uh, you don't necessarily use. To, you don't need to use this one. I would use this one because you're trying to find sine, okay? Sine of x. So what you do is this. You say, okay, cos 2x, here, I'm going to write this so you see it. Cos 2x and cos 2x, right? So what's cos 2x equal to? Cos 2x is equal to 3 over 5, uh, okay? Use the identities with only sine and cos and uh, that's easiest. Yeah, that's easiest, right? So we're going to use this guy, all right? And when you start using identities and formulas and stuff like this, consider it just when you were a kid, when you had, you know, if you watch little toddlers, they get little blocks in front of them, little things, and there's holes like square holes, rectangular holes, and they got blocks they have to put them in. And they go, oh, this doesn't fit here, this doesn't fit here, they bang. And then they put in right they put one in the right place they're like oh that fit in they get all excited they laugh they clap and then they grab another one oh this doesn't fit and they they put it in the right place and quickly they figure out that the holes are just placeholders for things you need to put in their place right well what's cos 2x equal to cos 2x is equal to 3 over 5 so 3 over 5 is really cos 2x so you're just going to go 3 over 5 is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x right that's what it is if that's the case then isolate sine x because you're trying to find out what sine of x is right okay grab the one bring it over so this becomes 3 over 5 minus 1 is equal to negative 2 sine squared x 3 over 5 minus 1 common denominator is 5 so you're going to go 5 so this becomes negative 2 over 5 is equal to negative 2 sine squared x multiply everything by negative 1 over 2 or divide by negative 2 right so you're going to divide by negative 2 because you're trying to get to sine x divide by negative 2 so you got negative 2 over 5 divided by negative 2 which is negative 2 over 5 times negative 1 over 2 2 kills 2 negative becomes negative so this is 1 over 5 right I'm just doing a speedy Gonzalez here. That way we can just save space and write it down here. Okay. So negative two over five divided by negative two is just one over five. Okay. I'll use these numbers feature. Other than mathematics, what is a very important school subject that is just as important as math? I'm curious. English. Learn your natural language well. Okay. So if you do this you end up getting with 1 over 5 is equal to sine squared x. If that's the case, sine squared x just means sine x brackets all squared. So to isolate sine x, just square root it both sides. So you square root both sides. Okay. If you square root both sides, you get sine x is equal to plus or minus 1 over square root of 5. Because square root of 1 is just 1. Okay. Is that clear? I'm going to erase. Uh, what am I going to erase? I'm going to erase the whole thing. I'm going to write this up here. Okay. So we have space. If you need to take a snapshot of this, keep, take a snapshot of this. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Me too. <laughs> oh, my <dear> God. <laughs> uh, if you really want it, uh, you could also derive the f uh, formula without memorization using linear algebra. 
uh, since cos 2x can be thought of as two uh, successive linear transformations dice power that rotate r square by the angle of, oh dude that becomes too complicated even for me uh dice power what was available yes it's, it's clear okay pass <laughs> please uh, let's see if i pass college after this nice okay i'm taking this down so we got sine x is equal to plus or minus one over root five right so let's take all of these down sine x plus or minus one over root five so sine x sine x is equal to plus or minus one over square root of five right okay so what are we going to do now we need to find tan of x right how are you going to find tan of x do you know there's multiple ways you could do it oh, i shouldn't erase one of the identities poop <laughs> there's multiple ways you could do it right you could look it up again you could go back to your triangle to try to find out the tan of x should we do that let's do that right here here's a triangle this is the easiest way to do it by the way put your angle anywhere you want that's your angle x right dice power linear algebra was the key to me finally memorizing trig identities like the sine x plus identity for example was it mask of raven i never memorized them i always look it up x sine is opposite over hypotenuse right so opposite one over square root of five now we're only going to use the positives because we're not going to use the negatives right the answer for tan x you're going to have positive and negative as well okay but this is what we're going to do right now so tan if you want to find tan of x you need opposite over adjacent but we don't have the adjacent so we need to figure out the adjacent so we're going to use pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared let's call this b right so one squared plus b squared is equal to uh square root of five squared right god that writing looks horrendous square root of five squared square root of five squared right so one squared is just one square root of five squared is just five so b squared is equal to five minus one so b squared is equal to four square root both sides so b is equal to plus or minus two right so this is equal to plus or minus two but we're not going to use the negative because we're going to use the positive right you can't have negative length right? so this is two well that means 10 of x is going to be one over two but because we have positive and negative it's going to be positive and negative okay that's one way you could do it it should be anyway positive and negative okay now here's another way we could do it we could use identities again okay so let me erase this what was the other identity we have the other identity we have two cos squared x minus one let me just confirm it two cos squared x minus one two cos squared x minus one uh two cos squared x minus one okay cool so we've got two cos squared x minus one right so the other identity we had was this cos 2x is equal to 3 over 5. well the double angle identity says this cos of 2x is equal to 2 cos squared x minus 1. again put your placeholders in we're doing trig right now atomic cryatomic mask of raven he gave it do domain so we can get rid of the uh, plus minus of it. oh really you gave a domain i didn't see the domain thanks mask of yeah if you're given a domain sort of a i, I always like to call it a range but if you give it a sort of a range domain of where the answer could be which is basically you can think about it as a unit circle then you just eliminate whatever doesn't fit in there right for this we're trying to get we're going to try to solve for cos x because cos x is related to sine x tan x right the domain is oh okay cool cool uh three pi over two let me write this down somewhere okay i'm gonna write it down here 
the domain is uh, 3 pi over 2 3 pi over 2 Oh, 2x is less than okay so 2x greater than that and 2 pi 2 pi Boop, 2 pi which is really x has to be between 3 pi over 4 and pi right if that's the case can you see that for down yep if that's the case then you're going to use oh i need the space here so i'll we'll deal with this afterwards right so again you're going to do the same thing cos 2x is this so this subs in here so 3 over 5 is equal to 2 cos squared x minus 1. Bring the 1 over, right? You're going to get 3 over 5 plus 1. We could do it on the side. 3 over 5 plus 1 is the same thing as plus 5 over 5. So that's 8 over 5, right? So this becomes 8 over 5 is equal to 2 cos squared x. Divide by 2 becomes 4 over 5 is equal to cos squared x square root both sides so you're going to get cos x is equal to plus and minus 2 over root 5. you're okay with that i hope so does that make sense i'm just square rooting both sides square root of 4 is 2 square root of 5 just square root of 5. okay so what we have now is cos x is plus or minus 2 over root 5. So I'm going to erase this guy here. Let's put that guy up there. Cos x. Cos x is equal to plus or minus 2 over square root of 5. Okay, I only do game programming now. My mind's been blown. <laughs> I'm going to erase these. Watch this. Take a look. What's another definition of tan that we have? Tan is opposite over adjacent. Tan x is opposite over adjacent. But it's also equal to sine over cos. Exactly, Miro. Sine over cos. I just uh, I'm just amazed at how clean <laughs> your wife keeps the board it's the trick is these guys these things that they these things that they sell these are garbage really they're just brutal just get one of these rags that you get when you clean cars uh fantastic this one i need to renew this but still pretty good right so tan is also sine x over cos x well we know what sine x is sine x is one over root five What's cos x? We know what cos x is. Cos x is 2 over root 5. Haha. <laughs> right? You're amazing so you can buy more of them. So all you gotta do is sub this in for sine, sub this in for cos. Forget about the plus and minus for now. It's just gonna be plus or minus. Shop towels, is that what they're called? 10 bucks for 100. 10 bucks for 100 shop towels. Amazing. Right. I, the, the only reason I have this, by the way, the only reason I have this is because I had a sale on with multiple multiple markers and it was cheaper to buy one with the eraser than buy one without the eraser. Right. So sine x is, I'm just going to say 1 over square root of 5 divided by 2 over the square root of 5. Well, when you're dividing a fraction and a fraction, we'll write this more clearly so it's not so messy. So you see it. 1 over square root of 5 divided by 2 over the square root of 5. If you're doing a division, fraction over a fraction, just go sideways. Square root of 5 divided by 2 over the square root of 5. And then you just flip it, right? So 1 over square root of 5 times square root of 5 over 2. Square root of 5 kills square root of 5. You get 1 over 2. Whoop. Right? So tan x is 1 over 2. Hey, that's exactly what we got before. That's the same answer. Cool. If it wasn't, we were in deep trouble. <laughs> Chicho's math sucks. But it's not. You get 1 over 2, 1 over 2. Perfect. So tan x is 1 over 2 plus or minus... Uh, well, right now, let's say plus and minus 1 over 2. We're going to look at the domain, right? I'll show you what the domain is all about. 
wow thanks chicho it's good to have someone like you doing these time during these times i appreciate it. my pleasure man wow i'm amazed chaos remains hello hello we actually do trigonometry at second year of high school where i am from uh, i have found the best way uh, to remember the number is with the unit circle unit circle that's exactly what we're about to deal with right now right let me show you the domain of this thing and the unit circle 100 percent yeah and by the way i got a whole playlist of trigonometry let me give you guys the link for the trigonometry playlist uh, trick 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 i love trig and trigonometry is ridiculously important right so here's a trig playlist and this was going to be the first uh, module that I was going to put out for mathematics uh, but I think it's uh, the adding subtracting one that we're going to work on to bring that out uh, but the trig one I created and I go through talking about the unit circle and it's like six hours worth of content there and I really get into the details of what it is that we're doing but for now let's deal with this right so we have the answers that we need right so i'm going to erase all of this i'm going to erase this i'm going to do the unit circle here okay kill this 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 plus or minus plus and minus one over two right so plus and minus one over two it feels way better doing it here than doing this back in school in the classroom i like this good good now take a look at this thing the domain is this let me write down the domain here uh three pi over two two x squared and three pi over two but less than two pi right now we want to find out what the domain is is for x right not two x so all you got to do is just divide everything by two so really what you end up getting is three pi over four x and pi. Now, what does that mean, right? That is your unit circle. Okay. Your unit circle, this is your x axis, this is your y axis. Well, let's not call them x and y because x we're using as the angle. Right. so this coordinate here for unit circle is one and zero this coordinate is zero and one this coordinate is negative one and zero this coordinate is doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, what am i doing zero and negative one right so when they say you're going from uh, if if it was this one three over two pi and two pi two pi is referring to this the angle so that's a full circle from there to three pi over two pi over two is 90 degrees so you're going from here to here so this is the region we're looking at right we're in the fourth quadrant okay i'm like sherlock i only keep in my head what is useful but i might have to get a rudimentary understanding of this math and you might need uh what do you call him uh his assistant uh watson you need a watson with you elder god yeah exactly the same for me if you know the best uh quarters numbers then you know all the degrees if yeah if you know the first the first yeah the first if you know the numbers here you know everything else right but they want the answer here right actually this is three pi over four three pi over four so we're actually over here right because pi over four is uh, 45 degrees so three of them we're going boop 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 so we're actually talking about this range for x okay so you got to figure out which quadrants you're in uh if it was this case for 2x but the answer was supposed to be x right the unit circle is the most useful thing all the way through calculus yeah agreed okay so what you got to do is just say okay on here everything's positive in here 
cos is negative. In here, sine is negative. Here, cos is negative, sine is negative. In here, um, what's negative? Uh, tan is negative. <laughs> tan is negative, right? Agreed, agreed. No, sine is... Um, no, what am I doing? I'm doing... Uh, sine is positive. Uh, cos is... Tan. Oh my god, I got this backwards. I never remember this. I don't do it... I do it according to what sine... Um, I'm trying to do the... All students take calculus. I'm trying to do that, but I don't do that. I usually say the x-axis is cos theta, the y-axis is sine theta. So sine is negative here and here, cos is negative here and here, right? And tan is positive here, positive here, negative here, negative here, right? So that's the way I do it. Uh, cos and sine is negative on the third. Yeah, it's negative on the third. My apologies for that, by the way. I'm trying to do it the way they teach in the school, but I get confused the way they teach it in school, right? So when you're doing this thing, um, what were we doing? We're looking, if you're looking for 2x, then you're in this zone, right? If this was the domain, 2x had to be within there. You're in this quadrant, okay? So you would take, uh, the cos would have to be positive. So for this one, uh, cos x would have to be positive. The answer for this would be cos x would be 2 over root 5. The sine would be the negative one. Sine would be negative 1 over 5. And the tan would be the negative one, which would be negative 1 over 2. If you're in this quadrant, in this zone, then the sine, uh, well, let's do the cos first. The cos x would be the negative, negative uh, 2 over root 5. The sine x would be the positive, which would be uh, 1 over root 5, and the tan would again be the negative. If I understood the question properly, anyway. But this shouldn't give you the domain for 2x. This should say for x. Right? Also, uh, there's a tan axis, which is parallel to uh, y prime, and it passes through 1, 0. Thanks, Jijo. My pleasure, uh, Mira. I've never done the tan axis, actually. I probably did at university, but I forget. I forget about it. Good question. Good question. And Mask of Raven, thank you for um, answering, providing the answers for him, for Miro. I like, I like. Good stuff. Mathematics, can't go wrong with mathematics. Right. Great conversations. Very much related to our, uh, to much of uh, much of our society, right? Very much related to much of our society. Good. We did one sort of simple mathematics, the basic stuff, adding, subtracting. We didn't do multiplying. Oh, I was going to do multiplying too. Poop on the number line. I forgot the multiplication example. Oh. That's okay. Uh, we have the videos out there for it, so that's fine, right? So we did just the basic operations and one trig, which is good. By the way, Miro, where, what grade are you in that you're dealing with this? In my part of the world, this would be more, if you're lucky, you get in grade 11. If you're not lucky, you get in grade 12. So, oh, you're in college. Okay, you're in the States then, yeah? States or Canada? So your college must be the exam time uh, must be now i think pretty sure pretty sure it should be around now i am from the us okay my teacher told me the coronavirus cases are going up like a log log logarithmic function possibly uh, possibly We'll see. They were initially exponential, right? So if they're going up exponentially, and what does it mean by logarithmic function? Yeah, politics, thanks, Elder God. Go 
<laughs> it following logistic growth actually logistic growth i think logistic growth is this guy isn't it let me erase this is it logistic growth this thing just basically the s i'm going to look it up Logistic growth. Logistic growth. Logistic growth. Logistic growth. Oop. Yeah, it's the S one. Cool. Yeah, it's the S one. Awesome. Logistic growth. It is, it is, yeah. It's the S curve, right? Initially, our, like many places were this, right? Hopefully it's going down, the growth rate anyway, right? And lockdowns are being released, right? People can interact more. Hopefully we don't see it going up this again. So we hopefully we don't get this, right? Hopefully we get Maybe I'll do a little thing, but hopefully we get that. Hopefully it will be like logistic growth. It's uh, looking more like exponential growth at the moment. Um, some places, some places. And that's the kicker, right? Like we have to, with any type of uh, system, right? I'm, I'm trying to use my words. Uh, well enough so we don't enter the realm of politics because we don't want to be there right um, depending on which system we're looking at we're going to see different things happening all places i've seen have been completely the logistic curve might be a second bump we'll see might be yeah yeah from from the looks of it it's all some people are a little delayed right some places you know obviously We've had this, but then if this is your timeline, right? Time, right? Some places didn't see the growth first. Some places saw this. Some places saw boop, boop, banged it right away, right? But it's all the same, basically. It's, and it's not necessarily this that was important. It's how the, healthcare system within a society is able to handle the pressures being loaded on it right it's the load that matters uh, the abilities of the healthcare system to scale up right any places that are running on bare bones uh, they weren't any curve <laughs> was going to be devastating for them right? fun math we did good math today. Good math. Good math on a chill Sunday. Awesome. 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 And tomorrow we're going to do technology, I think. Yeah, I would say something here, but it would become a political discussion. So, yeah, let's continue with math. Let's continue with math. Let's continue with math. I think we've done enough politics uh, for, uh, for a while we're gonna do, what are we doing i'm just looking up our schedule we've got two more we got stream uh, tomorrow and next day as well but i forgot uh what are we doing oh we're doing tomorrow oh tomorrow we're doing politics oops <laughs> okay save the politics for tomorrow gang. tomorrow 7 p.m pdt my time we're doing politics and on tuesday we're doing technology i thought i skipped politics this uh this uh session but i didn't i guess uh, so tomorrow 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. we're doing politics and on Tuesday from 3 p.m. to 5 30 p.m. and all of a PST time PDT time PST time my time Pacific West Coast Canada United States uh, we're gonna do technology some tech talk tomorrow no tech talk is on Tuesday my apologies tomorrow is uh, economics i want to mainly focus on the economics economics is crucial right now right 
I have some pending math write-ups on Discord I've been trying to work on. Oh, do you? Mask over? Did you load those on? Spider-Man so excited. I'll be there regardless. Nice. Nice Grand Prix. Hi, Professor. I wouldn't call myself a professor, no. Uh, professor of Comics? No, I wouldn't call myself Professor of Comics. Professor, I, I'm well-versed in cer certain things. Uh, so... Uh, could you maybe show some examples of statistics and probability um, I mean that's huge <laughs> what examples were we looking at you can look at the dice probably distribution of dice yeah I like dice I got a video out there on dice let me show you the probably distribution of dice that one was fun Chicho dice Boop. let's see if it pops up Boop. Here you go. I gotta load this one on YouTube as uh, on BitChute as well. Here's the video for the probability distribution of dice. Uh, yeah, that is the most uh, common one. That would be cool. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Not yet soon ones regarding logistic growth golden ratio and maybe one more if i remember okay cool so here's uh here's dice right and we're talking about not one die uh, but we're talking about two dice two die two dice right so the numbers that you can get on dice go from when you're rolling two dice six-sided die is two to twelve right so i'm just going to put the numbers here two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve right so three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay now let's look at two what's the probability of rolling a two well if you're rolling two dice right here's the two dice right? to be able to roll two dice is it like a bump in the middle it's a bump in the middle right but you should look at it uh, check this out if you're rolling two dice right what's here let me draw this as if it's dice and then we're not going to do that again right right you need a one here and a one here to get a two right well what's the probability of rolling a one on the first die it's one out of six right you need to roll a one right on the second die you also need to roll a one so it's one out of six so the probability of rolling a two with two six sided dice you multiply them one out of 36 not two out of 12 okay the nice you roll the closer it gets to the normal distribution yeah so this becomes one out of 36 okay so how many different ways can you roll two one this is uh what do we call the y-axis we call it uh i love this math i love this math too i did a unit once on the statistics of Dungeons and Dragons, great project. I'd like to see some of that. Oh, grand, that would be amazing, right? So there's only one way, method. Let's call this method, uh, method, method. So one way of getting two, right? You have to, it's one out of 36, right? The probability of rolling a three, there is you need to get a one and a two now we're not concerned about the second roll right on the first dice you can get a one or you can roll a two so you can roll a one out one on the first die or two on the first die and still have the chance to get a three so there's two ways two out of six things you can roll on the first die and still make it make a three but if you roll a one on the first die you only have one thing that you can roll on the second die to make it a three 
it has to be a two. So there's only one out of six on the second die, right? So on the first die, you have two probabilities, two um, options to roll. But on the th second die, you have to get that appropriate roll to make a three, right? So on the first die, you could get a one, and then you have to get a two on the second die. Or on the first die, you can get a two, but then you have to roll a one on the second die. So your choices for the second die are always gonna be one out of six because we're gonna count the choices to be on the first dice, right? On the second dice, it's one out of six. So the probability of this is two out of 36, okay? So there's two different ways you can roll a three. Two ways you can roll a three, okay? The probability of rolling a four, right? You could get a one on the first die and then you're gonna, you have to get a three on the second die you could get a two on the first die and you would have to get a two on the second die or you could get a three on the first die and you have to get a one on the second die so the probability or the choices you have on the first die is three out of six right but on the second die is one out of six so the probability of this is three out of 36 Probability of five, you got four choices, right? You could get a one, two, three, or a four on the first die, and then you have to get the, you have no choice. You have to match, not match, but get whatever it is you need to make a five total. So there's only one out of six on this one. So there's four out of 36 for five. Probability of a six, you can get a one, two, three, four, five on the first die. I've got a question for you, Chicho. You and I are going to roll dice. Highest number wins. You have two choices, a 12-sided die or a 10-sided die. However, if you pick the 10-sided die, you win, you win ties. Which tie would you pick? You win ties. Oh, you win ties. Oh, I don't know. I would have to think about that. Allegar. Uh, not Allegar, Graham. And Allegar, I once calculated the probability of me getting in my car. <laughs> I stopped it for four days after. <laughs> I started laughing. I didn't finish reading it. I'm not the, the saying it, the speaking it out. So five out of six, right? And to get a six, there's five ways to get out make a six on the first die as long as you get the appropriate number of second die right so you have five choices on the first die and one choice in the second die so there's five out of six and the probability of seven you can get any number on the first die so six out of six right and on the second die you have to get whatever it is to make a seven so if you get a one on the first die you need a six on the second die so your options are limited on the second die based on what you get on the first die, right? So this would be five and then six. So five, oops, and then six for seven. And then you're symmetrical. That's the beauty of dice. So you go step down. So eight is the same as six. Nine is the same as four. 10 is the same as, um, what do you call it? Uh, 10 is the same as four, nine is the same as five, uh, 11 is the same as three, and 12 is the same as two. Okay, that's the probability distribution of dice. Isn't it a five out of 36 there? For which one? Do, 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 do. Oh, five out of 36, thank you very much. Thank you very much. If I make mistakes, please let me know. Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks, Mega. Yes, he missed the three. I missed the three. It's back. Not related, but I just realized my boots were made in the Dominican. I was wondering why they were so comfortable. Dominican cigars are good too, but Cubans are better. Okay, that's the probably the distribution of uh, two six-sided die. As for Graham's question, um, 
you have two choices a 12 sided die or a 10 sided die however if you pick the 10 sided die you win ties uh, da -da 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 -da. so whoever gets the higher die so if I pick the 10 sided die you could still pick the 12 right hmm good question my instinct says I would pick the 12 sided die one ten correct I'll use what you don't pick same rules apply I use what you don't pick okay so one person here let's check this out let's see what the answer is so does the graph repeat for three uh, three dice four and more does the graph uh, can you do radiance oh we just did some trick Skodos uh, Skodos uh, here's my trigonometry playlist check this out this is my trigonometry playlist and I've put together an extensive uh, stuff on trigonometry okay and I deal with the radians uh, if you know the preliminary stuff you can skip over some of the initial stuff I have an exam in a week dude you want to learn radians check out the trick videos I put out in that playlist the ASMR ones okay here let me find it a radian one uh, radians and degrees how they're related so fourth video down here I'll give you the link to the specific video but I think we talk about radians a little earlier on okay but this playlist is fantastic it's like seriously I'm tooting my own horn but it's the best uh, explanation uh, playlist course uh, that is available to learn trigonometry and I'm only halfway through <laughs> okay I still haven't gone to identities and graphing them in detail and uh, looking at word problems so uh, you know there's still more work to be done but there's like six hours of content there it's nice and chill and once you're finished that thing the ASMR ones you should have a pretty good understanding of what a unit circle is and what trigonometry is and what radians are and all that jazz and I show a few tricks of how to calculate things pretty easy not tricks but how the symmetry works okay if you have questions send me a message it should help you out I'm gonna take this down let's talk about the uh, Graham's problem let's check it out uh, as for the question you ask is it the same for uh, three dice and uh, four dice uh, there will be symmetry there for sure but I don't know uh, I haven't graphed it out I don't know what what it would be right so we have a 12 sided die here and we've got a 10 sided die here right question is we're playing a game whoever gets the higher roll wins okay yeah I learned about all that stuff in class but isn't uh, uh, it's in Dutch love the conspiracy theory ASMR <laughs> it's grand free I wish I had good professors and teachers uh, throughout my education because I feel I could have been more interested in math a bit earlier yeah mega me too right I think everybody wishes that we call the in, in, so circle over there oh and what do you call it the unit circle in in hands oh man Dutch is a hard language right and if you roll the ten sided die you always win a die win a tie yeah and you win ties here tie win All right so we have 12 how will we calculate this how will we calculate this maybe the three dice one applies for six times three and the middle would be nine wild guess middle would be 20 uh, 21 because all of them would be sixes right three times six oh sorry three times yeah it would be uh, the middle one would be not 21 
Uh, oh, the middle one. What would the middle one be? The highest one would be uh, 18. The middle would be 9, possibly. I think 3 dice and 11 have equal chances. I will take the dice. <laughs> so how would we end up doing this? How would we do this? I think one of the first things you would have to calculate is what are the probabilities of you getting the same roll, right? That would have to come into play. Getting the same roll for this one would be How will we go about this? This is all combinatorial permutations, and I'm horrendous at combinatorial permutations. This was an extra credit question I asked my sophomores. I had some fi uh, some figure it out. I'm sure you can do it. <laughs> Pressure on. How much time do we got? In four minutes. Uh, if we pick twelve sided die, the probability of rolling two times same number is two out of 12 or no two out of 24 would there not be more chances to tie rather than landing on 11 or 12 uh, and 12 on the 12 side of that possibly that might be the best way to approach this actually I got the answer and the answer and take the the 12 sided that's the one you take you might have to extend your stream to do this one you Hi. oh love lobo how are you doing <laughs> awesome how will we do this i mean this one has i like uh what do you call it pope's uh comment what's what's the probability of landing on 11 or 12 and there's two of them there right so two out of 12 we're guaranteed a win because we get 11 or 12 right uh roll number 11 or roll number 12. right the 10 sided die for me thanks that's what elder god says uh, kind of risky risk he riskily he riskily though and twice on sunday first find the chance of a tie up to 10. yeah what's the chance of a tie the chance of a tie would be one out of ten wouldn't it would that be it chance of a tie one out of ten no uh what's the chance of a tie what the probability of a tie be one out of 12 you get a one one out of ten two out of no still one out of 12 so one out of 12 one out of 12 12 120 okay how do we calculate chance with 10 percent chance is it no it's not because this is 12. we gotta take into consideration rolling at 11 and a 12. winner winner chicken dinner winner winner chicken dinner <laughs> I, I personally would pick the 12 however actually one way you could do it this way as well check this out you could logically do it this way and this way you would pick the 10 right you could say this right there is the number 11 and the number 12 give you an automatic win on this right so you have two chances of automatically winning on if you pick the 12-sided die right however there are 10 possibilities that if you tie you win with the 10-sided die so i would take the 10. i would take the 10. assume d10 is n and go from there maybe maybe i'll give the answer if you want uh, the end of stream. Oh, I always want the answer, Graham. You're asking the wrong guy. 
just want to let you know that I really appreciate and respect you spending your time on helping others. Keep it up. Will do. Thank you very much. Uh, Bob Ross. Oh, Bob Ross. Totally real. Bob Ross. Totally real. And thank you for popping onto our stream, right? I mean, the less sided the die, the more chances it ties, right? 10 for me. I would pick 10. Because guaranteed win on this one is only two choices, right? guaranteed win on this one there's 10 of them right what is, what's the question you're rolling two die right you have a chance you have a choice to pick the 12-sided die or 10-sided die okay whoever gets the higher number wins but if you pick the 10-sided die if you tie you win right ready for that chicken dinner oh wait i didn't take into account that a tie results in a reroll. Is it a reroll? No, it's a win. Uh, Mask of Raven. I think a tie is a win. Okay, spoiler warning. Graham, I want the answer. Anybody that doesn't want the answer, you should jump off the stream now. <laughs> so I had a student work out every permutation. That's the kicker. That's where I was going for, but that's too much. Permutation resulted and figuring out the percentage chance of winning based on every permutation you have two more chances to win if you pick the 12 oh really yeah it should be a win so the 12 is better so is it just simple as this picking these two not really but it's got to be the permutations there's got to be a quicker way of doing this ground it's simple math actually <laughs> oh <my> god <laughs> hilarious 12 is te technically better yeah those are the two chances right there on the board so that's it it's as simple as this but a tie you win with the 10 it's in the ties it must be in the ties well you you do have two more chances to win but isn't the chance of getting a tie in general lower yeah i guess that's what the pro that's what the question would be ah that would be an amazing way to do it fill out time figure out what the probability of getting a 11 or 12 out of 12 would be 2 out of 12 right that's your probability percentage whatever that turns out to right and then you have to figure out what the probability is of getting a tie right and that's it and whichever one so probability of getting a tie tie right and whichever probability is more is the better chance, better die. No, <laughs> you're free to permit. I don't want to think about the permutations. <laughs> Never mind then. I'm right anyway. I'm right anyway. Ah, mask of raven. If you roll only once, the 12 is the way to go. Chicho overtime. Chicho overtime. Overtime. Okay, we call. We call. I'm horrible at math over Twitch chat. I make too many slips. Oh, dude. A mask of Ribbon, I know how you feel. If we pick 12 and think if I roll, uh, roll 1, I can win with 9 different numbers. But if I pick 10, he rolls 1, I can win with 1 number. I suck at probability. That was a good, it, was, it was a great question, Graham. Fantastic question. Difficult. Difficult, but a great question okay gang let's call the stream thank you very much for being here super fun fantastic to do fantastic to do i'm going to go roll sometimes nice if you like this work that we're doing gang i'm on patreon if you want to support this work patreon is a fantastic way to support this work okay you can also follow i don't put anything behind paywalls and you can just follow what we're doing over time and after a while if you do feel like supporting this work patreon is a fantastic way to support this work by the way gang on twitch thank you very much for the follows and the subs if you've been following and subbing and if you want to participate in the discussions here that we're having because i'm going to be uploading this to youtube and bitshoot twitch is where you want to be at okay have a great rest of the day so you guys as well have a great day everyone for sure uh, I do announce these streams on Twitter, Gavs, Minds, VK, and Allo 30 minutes before we go live. And I do announce other things that we are doing on 
those platforms as well as well as patreon of course right i am uploading uh, audio of the content that we're creating a lot of the content that we're creating on soundcloud now okay i'm uploading um uh, the open discussions we're having on soundcloud i'm not doing the mathematics because mathematics we need the visual right so anything that doesn't require visuals we're gonna upload the audios to soundcloud i'm also gonna go through my previous library of 900 plus videos that we have on youtube at least 400 of those 500 of those are with a lapel mic 500 i don't know how many there are 500 of those, are those lapel mic i've had a request to upload the audios because people just want to listen to the discussion and whatnot um, i'm going to start uploading those audios to soundcloud it's going to take us at least until the end of this year to do it next few months maybe longer okay so if you want to get some audio of readings and discussions and other things soundcloud uh, you can join there as well and i am uploading the videos to youtube and BitChute everything goes to bit shoot as long as the processing is done uh, no technical glitches and most things going on to youtube as long as it can go past the sensors the filters right and if you are on youtube joining youtube membership is a fantastic way to support this project as well okay aside from that <laughs> oh my god youtube is evil <laughs> aside from that oh my god keep politics to politics <laughs> aside from that gang thank you very much for being here moz thank you for taking care of business um, thank you for helping people out if they had math questions thank you for coming here with your math questions thank you for participating in the discussions and i hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic sunday and uh, we'll talk tomorrow economics more economics related stuff really than politics and current events but current events is economics okay tomorrow night 7 p.m pdt and on tuesday 3 30 p.m i believe we're going to talk about technology nice 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 bye everyone hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend